From the barrios of Hayden, Arizona, Pete Rios became the first and only Latino to serve as president of the Senate in Arizona. He shared his thoughts about life in the barrio, life in the political world, and how best to improve the quality of life. Pete Rios is a democratic mainstay in Arizona politics. His achievements are remarkable considering his amazing journey from a barrio in the copper mining community of Hayden, Arizona. The world that I witnessed growing up was a very segregated world. All the Mexicanos lived on one side of the wash in the barrio. All the uh, gringos, as we called them, lived on the other side in, in the white section of town. I was very reluctant to go to school because I was afraid. I didn't know one word of English. Rios went on to earn a BA in sociology and a master's in social service administration from ASU. He says his desire to learn how the legal and political systems work was triggered by a childhood experience. And this is probably what really turned my life around. I was driving my dad's old pickup truck. I took it without permission. But I was 15, shouldn't be driving. So I drove it up to San Pedro Road, and I'd be darned if there wasn't a cop behind me. And I thought I was driving straight. <laughs> but anyway, he pulled me over and said, let me see your license. So I'll have a license. He says, okay, ticket, blah, blah, blah. You'll be in front of the magistrate, the judge, and such a date. The chief of police took me before the magistrate, and he started on this litany about how Pete Rios is just a troublemaker, and he's out of control, and blah, 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 judge, and whatever. I'm going, well, wait a minute. I I'm just here because I took my dad's truck without permission and I don't have a license. The judge said, okay, your sentence is 10 days in jail. And I'm thinking like, no, nah, you're kidding. It wasn't until the iron door slammed behind me that I knew he was serious. And I'm going, I'm 15, I don't have any business here. And then the judge came by the iron door and he said, well, you know what, Pete, if you work for the town, I'll cut your sentence in half, so you only have to serve five days. Do you want to do that? And I'm going, yeah, I want to get the hell out of here as soon as possible. What was really sad was that there wasn't anyone in our Chicano barrio that was uh, audacious enough, sophisticated enough, or educated enough to be able to step in and say, what the hell is going on here? This is a minor that's 15 years old. He has no business in an adult jail. And there wasn't that resource. So I remember thinking, you know, I gotta get myself in a position where this kind of stuff doesn't ha happen to children because at 15, you're still a minor. And, and I think that's had to, a lot to do with me after getting out of high school and after getting out of college, that I got into politics. Pete Rio's political career includes 20 years as a state senator and four years as a state representative. During that time, he served as president of the 40th legislature. Beyond the district he serves, Rios has some concerns about what has happened to the accomplishments of the past by Latinos. How far we had come and how far we have gone back. In the 50s and the 60s, we had a lot of struggles, but we had a lot of good leaders too. I mean, in, in the valley, voices. voices, good voices, Alfredo Gutierrez, Joe Eddie Lopez, my friend Ed Pastor, his brother. You know, we, we had some, some leaders uh, that, that spoke up and we made a lot of gains. We made gains not only in Arizona, but nationwide. Some of us don't even identify anymore with our Latino heritage. Most of us still do, and we're very proud of it. You know, we're not gonna have a homogeneous group of Latinos. We don't. We are very heterogeneous, and we all march to little different drummers. And hopefully, we can still reach out and bring some back to have a cadre of Latino leaders that know what it's all about that know what their culture is about, 
that know what their Nanai and Tata believed in. Having served in the Arizona legislature for over 20 years, Rio says there's a need for Latino legislatures to step up and be heard. He senses a lack of self-assurance. I think it's insecurity that they still don't feel secure enough, knowledgeable enough to take that step and be able to stand and defend it. Uh, it it's not that they're complacent. It's, it's we need to provide them a, a higher comfort level that you can do it, you can do this. And they need to do what Congressman John Lewis said and said for many years before he passed, and that's to challenge, to take courage, to do things. Raw courage. I don't see raw courage in the legislature right now. And do it and make trouble, but make sure it's good trouble. You know, and if somebody there will kind of take that little message that John Lewis left, I think we could accomplish a lot.